What is up guys? Good morning. I'm headed up to the barn to milk this morning with my GoPro. Since last night in the barn, I damaged my camera pretty good. Um, lesson learned. GoPros are for barn chores. <laughs> hey guys, good morning. What's up? Why are you your Because it's muddy up here. So, there's so much to explain with the cows right now. And I've been thinking about like making a video, doing the explaining. And I just, a lot of times when there's a lot of confusing information, I just don't. I don't want to do it. What'd you say? You need to keep mugs and syrup up Mugs and syrup up here so you're ready okay. for milking. That's funny. Like literally. Okay, y'all, I want you to give Hope a wide berth because she's in heat. All right. So I actually filmed a clip yesterday, but it didn't, it wouldn't, didn't work right. I lost it. Uh, so here's our Dutch door that the guys built. And inside we did hang one of these um, screens, these fly screens that have this magnetic strip in the middle. So you can come through and it closes back, which is nice. Dealing with flies is such a, an issue. And um, if you have cows, especially in this time of year, so you'll see we've got fly trap up there. We've got the straight up we have fly traps in here we have fly water we put fly spray on the cows it's just a matter of trying to combat the flies some fly some cows are way more sensitive to other than others and our dairy girls seem to be mostly okay um we do put ointment on hope's eyes because her eyes like not her eyeballs we put it around her eyes because her eyes get really runny um with the flies on her face and you can get fly masks and actually, I was looking at ordering one the other day for Hope because of her eyes getting ready. Of course, at this point, it's kind of towards the end of fly season, but if we get that, we'll have it for next year. So you'll notice that Maya is not here this morning. Usually, he does the morning milking, and usually, um, we are milking both cows in the morning. But I actually left Hallie in with Helen last night, so I would not have to milk Helen this morning um, because I knew Maya wasn't going to be here. So I'm just milking Hope. So I put her up last night in that yard because I knew there would be no mud to lay in because I don't want to have to hose her off again this morning. I use this fly spray. You can make something like this with the different like oils and stuff. Um, I buy this one from a place called Synergy and it works pretty well. Um, if it rains, you gotta reapply it. I mean, it's pretty much a daily application thing, but during this time of year, man, the flies are so bad for cows. And I don't want my animals to be miserable. Okay. So usually a quick brush down. After putting the fly spray on, just make sure that it gets down in the hair. Brush the udder off to get any loose hair off of it. Brushing is really, really important in the winter when their winter coats are in and then when they're losing that to keep them from just itching terribly, but I'm sure it feels nice during this time of year, even when their coats are sh super short. So, um, just put the kick bar on. Somebody commented on my video last night and said, when are you gonna lose the kick bar? Like, probably when I wake up and think, I'd like to get kicked back out today, which is never. Um, Helen doesn't really kick. We put it on her kind of as a precaution. When they're in heat, they can be very, very testy. Um, but Hope is, she's kind of a, a jerk anyway. Like, she, I say that kind of as a term of endearment. We're like, oh, Hope, that jerk. But she really is very, um, she's just rude. She's pushy. She gets the kick bar. It doesn't hurt her. It doesn't hurt anything. Takes an extra three seconds to put it on. Or ten, probably, actually. I actually, when, when we were first milking Hope and I was milking her out in the pasture without any of this infrastructure, obviously no kick bar, no stanchion, none of that. It, there, was, there was a romance to that, but on a very practical sense, it was very stressful. Um, and my legs were pretty and like constantly bruised and so I mean I kind of like not having that issue all right ready up y'all can 
see that. So I washed her off. I didn't, didn't video really that. So I'm gonna try to talk to you guys while I milk this cow about the cow situation, the dairy situation. I have not wanted to make this video this week because it's a lot of information. And sometimes when I just sit down and dump a lot of information in one sitting, people are like, man, that makes my head hurt. That's overwhelming. And the thing is, when you're talking about logistics on a farm, sometimes it is overwhelming. Sometimes there are decisions that have to be made. You're not 100% sure what the right decision is. Sometimes you are getting in over your head. Sometimes you make drastic decisions and they play out well. We're coming up on our one year anniversary with Hope. We got this cow, Hope, from my friend Hannah. She's local and Hope was born on our farm. It was the first dairy calf she'd had born on our farm. She's, she was four years old. She calved a couple of times. She was not pregnant. She came with her calf, Honey, who is half Jersey, half Red Bull. And we were like, okay, we're getting into dairy cows. And we were learning to milk. We were learning to use the milk. And we were getting, with her, with calf sharing, we were getting probably two, two and a half gallons of milk a day, which is a lot. Um, it's not quite enough to really replace all the butter and the cream and all the things for cooking and making lots of cheeses and stuff like that for a family our size, but it, it was enough. And we had hope for a few months when we decided we wanted to get another jersey. And that's when Helen came in. And the way this works for us is Jeremiah and I will be thinking, hey, maybe we should do something different. You know, maybe we should add to this or um, start looking. And what we do once we decide what we want to do is we just kind of start looking. Now there's a Facebook group called Milk Cow Market. It's nationwide, um, but that's a pretty good one. There are a lot of people and there are very legitimate breeders. Um, there is Craigslist and that is a way that people sell animals, but you, you need to really know what you're looking for. And I got hope for a good deal because it was a local deal and my friend cared where she went to. And I knew she was a solid cow because I knew her full history. I knew when she had been born and the woman who had been caring for her every day since then. And that was great. Hope was, I say she was my best buy because she came with a built-in cow mentor who's now one of my very good friends, which is really cool. Helen, I found basically from a, a lady that buys cows and then resells them. So Helen came from a, an organic dairy in New Hampshire. And she had been down here in South Carolina for a while. Um, long enough that she had been rebred and she was two months away from calving. And so they'd had her for a little while. And Helen was pretty expensive. Helen cost over twice what Hope cost. When you're looking at dairy cows, uh, depending on what you're buying, you can find one as cheap as like five or six hundred dollars. Um, but usually that's not going to come with papers, with history, with any sort of disease testing. Uh, you're a lot of times if you're getting one really cheap, you're getting a coal cow, which is uh, one that a place was getting rid of because they had an issue. So you might be getting problems with an animal like that. Now, if you're experienced, I know people who are experienced who have gotten coal cows from dairies and they're great for a homestead because you don't need top production when it's just for a family. And if you know what you're doing, even if you get a cow that's sick, a lot of times you can bring it back and you got a great deal. Um, I didn't feel comfortable with that because I didn't have any experience with cows. So when I got Hope, she was just this great find. And then Helen, I ended up buying a more expensive animal because she came with all the disease testing and I knew she was a good animal because the person who sold her was in the market, like basically bought good cows and sold good cows. Like anything, when it comes to animals, you are gonna spend your money or you're gonna spend your time. And so for Helen, she cost more because she was disease tested. She was A2A2. Um, 
all of those things, which you're gonna pay for. And she was also bred to sex semen, and she was due six weeks later with a heifer calf. Should have been a heifer calf, and it was. But sex semen's not 100%, but it's very high likelihood that you're gonna get what you're, you're trying to get. So with getting Helen, the idea was we would always have milk. Because when you breed a dairy cow, you have to dry them off about two months before they calf. Uh, depending on your cow and your body condition, you may give her more time. You may dry her off just a little bit sooner than that. And then of course they're gonna calf and they're gonna have colostrum and all this stuff. So it's gonna be probably a couple weeks before you're getting like regular drinkable milk from a cow after they calf. So you're looking at a few months without milk from that cow. So we had thought, well, we'll get a second one so that we can stagger the breeding and never be without milk. So enter Helen. Now, honey, her calf was pretty wild. And when we got her, she was not halter trained. She was already like 400 pounds. And we were trying to decide what to do with her at that point. We were brand new. We didn't really have the infrastructure. We didn't end up getting her halter trained. When we weaned her, we handled her a lot. And I actually now feel pretty confident that we could handle honey enough to milk her when the time comes. Food is an incredible motivator, and I think that I could get her onto a stanchion and milk her if she had food. Um, but I wasn't 100% sure if we could count on her as a dairy calf. I haven't counted her out. Honey is in with our Devon bull right now with the meat herd, and she should be bred. Um, I saw, we saw him mount her once, and then she ended up coming back into heat very hot outside which makes him less effective during this time um, and she went back into heat again last week so we're waiting to see if that took so if she breed if she's bred she will be calving her first calf next spring around march um, to april somewhere in there and um it'll be around the time she turns two may try to milk her may not now we got the American Milking Devons also, and I have a little heifer calf that I would like to use as a project later on down the road and see how they are for milking. The jerseys are really where I want to focus for now for our home dairy because their butterfat content is so high. And they're also just really good producers of rich milk. So there are breeds that definitely give you more than a jersey, but with the fat content, uh, you really just can't beat Jersey milk. All right, that's two and a half gallons right there. So I'm gonna bring this inside, cover it with a towel so no flies get to it and go get her off the stanchion now. Come back and bottle that. And that left us with Hope and Milk, Helen and Bilk. Neither one of them rebred to calf again. Uh, we have H Hallie the heifer calf, which can't be bred till she's like, I probably won't breed her till she's like 18 months old. Um, Honey the heifer calf, which hopefully is now rebred, and a bunch of Devons. It's a lot of cows for people who got their first one a year ago, right? Well, what happened was we decided we needed to rebreed Hope and honey. It's been kind of on the to-do list, but we weren't 100% sure what we were gonna do. We knew we had the Devons coming, and it was kind of in our mind that we might use that bull, um, but then we got a little delayed on getting them here, so time was ticking on, and we knew that we needed to rebreed them soon because we really don't wanna be calving in the middle of the summer heat when flies are super bad. So we decided we would do artificial insemination. We bought six Jersey semen, and we had um, a local AI tech come. I remember sharing that we had a little bit of a um, hairy situation where we ended up getting the Devons here the night before the girls' AI appointment, and they were in an induced heat. So you could induce heat. Well, then we got to talking because basically we bred both cows at the same time um, because it had gotten so late. And we thought, well, if they both take, then we're gonna be completely out of milk for those months. Which yes, I realized that was a point we bought both cows, but we had already kind of decided we wanted more than one in milk at a time because with one cow, we have enough for our family, um, but then we still have to buy some butter and some different things at the store um, 
but and and you know i can make some cheese i can make some butter but i can't make a lot of it and we're really not sharing much milk with just one cow and milk. so we decided with breeding them both at the same time they did not appear to come back into heat you know a month had passed we'd seen no signs of heat at all which we handle them every day we don't miss these things so we started looking again, thinking, well, if we got another cow that was due this winter, we could have another cow in milk and we would go that little brief period with just one cow in milk. And then once they all calve in the spring, we may be milking three or even four with honey in the morning, but they'll all have calves on them in the evening. So we won't be overwhelmed with milk. It won't be a whole lot more than we have right now. And I saw a post on that milk cow market for a lady, she had two bred heifers. And I was like, well, this would be good because heifers are not gonna be, I'm talking and not paying attention. That's too much. I'm gonna have to do a ninja move here, I think. Maybe not, maybe it's just right. Uh, so I messaged the lady. The heifers, you know, heifers don't produce as much as a cow in a later lactation. So I'm like, okay, well, we could get one of these heifers. She had one due in December and one due in March. And I thought, well, if I can get the one that's due in December, we'll have some milk to carry us over the dry time, and then we'll have three jerseys in milk. And my thought was, if it's too much, we'll just sell this new girl to a new home. She's disease tested, she's A2A2. Being a heifer, she's cheaper, because remember, you're gonna spend money or you're gonna spend time. Um, or you might get a discount for taking a risk. And having a heifer that's calving for the first time, on one hand, it could be an excellent deal because you're gonna get the longest lifespan out of that cow. A lot of people really want to get a cow with experience. And while it might be really appealing to say, oh, I can get this cow and it's her, you know, she's six, she's been milked for years, she's bomb proof, she's super easy to milk, whereas a heifer you have to train. How many lactations are you gonna get out of that six-year-old cow? Um, you know, you're looking at more health issues and hard, more feed bill. As they get older, they're a little harder to keep. And that might be right for some people. And for us, it was certainly right. With Hope and Helen, I definitely wanted a tried and true cow. But we have more experience now, and I felt brave enough to get a heifer because she's cheaper and I'll get more longevity out of her. Then I messaged the lady and basically she said, well, if you're gonna be coming to pick up one, I'll give you a discount if you want both. These were our 4-H cows. We're really attached. They're super sweet. They're both A2. They're both disease-free. They're both well-papered. They're both bred to really good bulls. One with sex semen, one with conventional. So I was like, we don't need two cows two more cows, we don't need two more heifers. Then I talked to Jeremiah and he's like, might as well. So we did, we bought two more heifers. And then, <laughs> I told you guys, I was not looking forward to this little story time and how much information I had to share with you and our decision-making process, which can be a little mind-numbing. Then we got the blood test back and learned that Helen and Hope were not indeed bred. The AI failed on both of them. So the decision we're sitting with right now, and I think we have pretty well made the decision. We've been chewing on it the last couple of days uh, since we got that news. After, mind you, I had made the commitment on these heifers and paid for them. Um, So the conundrum is now we're gonna have a heifer that calves in December and is in milk, a heifer that calves in March that's in milk, and Helen and Hope are not rebred. So they could still be in milk during that time. We may dry them off early, we'll just, we're just gonna see, but they're in heat today. Um, I noticed it yesterday, I was out here and they start mounting each other. Um, they're a little more touchy when you're milking them. They might be just a little more restless. You just, you know your animals and, and you can tell. Um, but this morning they're bellowing at the fence line at our Devon bull. And we have three more straws of the sex Jersey semen, but we are hesitant to do that again right now if the heat is gonna interfere with the effectiveness because we have to pay for it either way. So I've already paid for it once and it didn't work, which 
that's a risk you take breeding, especially this time of year. But um, I don't really want to pay for it again and then still not have my cows rebred. So I'm thinking today of turning them out in the field with a bull um, or trying to get the bull in the pen with them and see if he'll cover them. And that way I can get them rebred. Um, and at this point, if they got pregnant right now, they would be due in May, which is not terrible as far as the heat and the fly season. But if they're not bred soon, I'm probably gonna just hold off a couple of months um, and aim for a fall calving because I don't wanna be doing the calving in the fly season. I was talking, I called my friend Hannah, who I got help from, and asked her her opinion. And she was saying, you know, you can calve in the summer. Um, and she's from here, you know, she's been dealing with animals here for a long time, but she was like, you're just gonna have to take all the precautions, having fans in the barn and, you know, like really actively battling that. And so I'm kind of of the mind of I'd rather just avoid the situation altogether. So, um, I don't know. They're hollering at the bull this morning. I think this is the first heat they've had since that same heat. If they had one prior to this, it was just really mild. Um, and the heat can affect that, but I haven't noticed any signs. And I'm thinking maybe sinking their heat cycle did that. And I'm kind of hesitant to do that. I'm just thinking that if I put them out there today, they're probably more likely to get bred on a natural heat cycle rather than a synced one. And then the other thing is the bull, they just become less effective when it's really hot outside. And we've been pushing 100 degrees every day, which is uh, 38 Celsius. I mean, it's been very hot. And we have this unusual cool down this week. It's very much like low 80s, like 26, 27 Celsius for is, is, are our highs this week, which is really cool for South Carolina. Our lows are like 60. So I'm thinking if I put them out with the bull right now, there's probably a pretty good chance they'll get bred. Of course, can't guarantee they're heifers, but it will at least put them back in milk. And then I can get started on my experimenting with the Jersey Devon Cross. So if you're still here after all that, you must really like cows. <laughs> Sometimes when we're making decisions and there's so much information, like I, I have a hard time processing stuff like that. So Jeremiah is extremely great to have around because he's very methodical in the way that he thinks about things. Uh, the reason I'm not putting the jerseys out with the cow right now is because he's gone today. Um, he'll be back this afternoon. He just went to go pick up those cows. And I, he, I covered milking this morning and left Helen out last night because I knew he was gonna be gone this morning. I normally do the evening milking and he does the morning milking because the machine and all the stuff is all heavy. But, so this afternoon I will have two more jerseys here. They're so pretty, I can't wait to tell you guys that and we named them really cool names. And um, we may be putting our Hope and Helen out with Bocephus the Bull. So, I don't know, what would you do? You think that's a good decision? I'm probably not gonna like change my plans based on what somebody says. I think we've settled and decided on this. They might not take, it might be too late. They might need to go out this morning, but I don't wanna put them out there with him not here because if something goes wrong, then I'm, I'm here by myself and I, I don't know what I would do, so. Y'all look how yellow that milk is. That's all butter fat in that. When the cream separates on this, it'll be like right here. Isn't that crazy? So to kind of go deeper on the topic of changing your plans and like we're getting these cows thinking we're gonna take the risk of calving them and as all goes well and we feel like that's too many cows for us, we will downsize and sell. And when I say stuff like that, um, we have this big audience and you know, a lot of you are homesteaders or farmers or grew up doing it and you've, you've got exposure to it. Some people are dreaming of it but have no experience. That's how I was. I had this dream. I had never been around farm animals. The only thing I had was movie depictions and books and, you know, what I'd gathered from blogs and stuff like that. But for some people, um, I think they assume through the lens of what they know. Um, with farm animals, 
you're putting a lot of money into it, you're putting a lot of effort into it, and ultimately they have to work for your farm. And if they don't, responsibly rehome them, sell them. Um, and I assure you, because I've had people say, oh, you guys got that animal and you got rid of it, that poor animal, they're probably so scared, they're probably so confused and all that. You know, I think even if they do pass through a home like mine, they're only gonna know kindness here. They're gonna know excellent care. Their health is gonna be considered. Their mental well-being is gonna be considered. And, you know, I've been to cell barns in places where those things were not considered in animals. I have seen some devastating situations where you could literally look at it and go, man, that's really sad. Um, my home has never one of those so um I, I do understand why it might be hard for some people to understand buying animals you're not 100 percent sure you're going to keep long term but in this case they are going to serve the purpose of giving us milk in the interim when the girls we know we're going to keep are calving they may serve the purpose of staying here and being part of our very small dairy operation where we sell milk um, and if we decide to do something different, they may end up going to another home, which with our audience, hello Noah, sorry, I'm, am I in your way? Um, with our audience, it will likely be someone who watches us and who is getting a family cow where it is gonna be also cared for, honored and respected, which is important to me. And I feel very good about making that decision. So I'm also really excited to meet my two new girls this afternoon. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. If you made it to the end of this, man, gold star for you. Thank you. I bless you. Until next time.